Yo, what's up guys? So we're here to go over the best comeback cards right now in Yu-Gi-Oh! in 2019. Obviously with the release of the new 10 promos, everyone's testing these out, but we're really here to kind of help you guys out and deal with some of these boards that people will be making turn one. But I want to go ahead and hop into some gameplay and then I want to talk a little bit more about each one uh, while we go ahead and showcase off some gameplays and examples of some. So anyways, the first one over here is going to be probably one of the hands down the best ones, which is Nibiru the Primal Being. Now, this card is excellent going first, second, against anything that needs to basically swarm the board. Even if we're looking at examples of lower tier decks, like let's say Valkyries, so many decks in Yu-Gi-Oh need to special summon so many times. I could show you guys a Guard Dragon example, but I feel like I've uploaded like uh, 50 Dr Guard Dragon videos within the past week, so I want to give you guys some other examples of just other decks, like Six Samurais or anything. Nibiru just comes out and just says, you know what, your turn's over, it's my turn now. Now, in this instance over here, even with the Grand Maju Daiza, um, plus there's also another card I do want to mention here. Uh, that just came out, uh, Dimension Shifter, and we'll talk a little bit more about this card too. Uh, this card is very limited in its ways that it can be used, and it's got to be basically the first turn uh, of the uh, either player's turn. But in this example, I mean, you already know, it's already a game. Grand Maju Daiza can make so good use of Nibiru just because, again, uh, you're basically up against almost a blank board uh, against your opponent. Uh, and when you drop this card, it's pretty much a GG no re. Uh, you can just spam the board uh, with your monsters freely because your opponent more than likely invested everything into that play. Again, even a lower tier deck uh, like Valkyries. Um, this will just beat, beat out decks just by itself. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys have dealt with the uh, boards that people have been making, whether it's pendulums or any like uh, guard dragon variant where it ends up making a hot red dragon archery and abyss, uh, th thunder dragon variants, or anything that makes uh, a polosa, uh, bow of the goddess. You get this card out plus this. It's a very difficult thing to deal with, and uh, you could just straight up lose simply due to them going off. And this card can be tactically used again turn two, which I really like. It's almost like a floodgate if you will you can go ahead and spam the board with a bunch of your stuff and then when your opponent goes you just drop the nibiru and the tokens in defense mode so they're not going to be able to like otk you and that is one of the biggest reasons why this card is insane it's probably one of the most difficult cards to stop in the game um obviously um you have to tribute as many face-up monsters on the field and then special summon this card. So unless they throw out something that stops uh, special summonings from existing or like the, all their cards can't be tributed, for the most part, this is probably one of the best cards and I would definitely advise for any of you guys that really want to come back into Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, after your opponent has gone off, this is probably one of the better cards. The next card I want to talk about is Dark Ruler No More. So this one makes it so it negates the effects of all face-up monsters your opponent controls until the end of this turn. Also, for the rest of this turn, after this card resolves, your opponent takes no damage, and neither player can activate monster effects in response to this card activation. So, uh, basically what it comes down to is, again, most decks will be throwing out these turn 1 boards that are very difficult to deal with, and this is supposed to kind of help out with that. However, when you look at other uh, archetypes, uh, whether it's like Zephyr Pendulum, or it's pretty much they just kind of tech this card in, and pretty much they will have a negation of negate anything. You can also look at Crescendo and kind of look at that and say, oh, okay, that can basically stop that. I mean, Simon Greek is a, definitely a deck that can come back off of just one to two cards anyways. Uh, but the thing is, they can also uh, stop anything. So this card does have uh, some downsides. Obviously, your opponent's not going to be taking any damage, but a lot of times when your opponent exhausts their entire hand, their entire extra deck, which is something I want to showcase off in this next duel over here, um, um, and basically how good is this card because again rather remember that you're not going to be able to do any damage to your opponent so you basically give them an extra turn although if you break their board does that really matter anyways let's go ahead and watch uh, an example of uh, this in action here so uh, the Orcus Dragon Maid player is going to go first my boy Teriyaki going to be making a very strong board but the guy is going to top deck into Dark Ruler No More which is going to basically force a uh, instant negation. Uh, if you happen to have any follow up with that, that's what you want. Sometimes, um, which this is this is even higher level IQ play uh, in utilizing this, but it's in a sense your opponent has to stop this card. Otherwise, all of your monster effects aren't going to be able to activate. And if your monster effects negate other effects and you have multiple negations, you're going to think, of course I'm going to go ahead and stop that card. But sometimes, it's better to let it go through, and I'll explain why in, in a moment here. Um, depending on what your opponent obviously has in their hand, if they have no extender, sometimes getting rid of that one first monster 
uh, effect is way more valuable than keeping all of your other monster effects, and we'll get into that in a second here. But basically over here you can see we have Apollo that has multiple negates, and you'd think, okay, he's got three negations with this, this is four negations, this is five, how do you even lose? And if you want to consider this an, also another negation, that's six negates, you win. And that's what I was thinking too, I'm like, okay, how are we going to see good use of Dark Ruler no more? Okay, so we activate this. This automatically forces Zephra negation, any other uh, uh, card that would be able to uh, negate anything essentially here. So we're seeing that, that's going to go ahead and stop the uh, Dark Ruler no more. And again, this is the point is you have a follow-up play um, if you can. Um, now, he even has the uh, Crusadia Power, which is going to go ahead and actually uh, act as another form of protection here. But that goes again and gets stopped. We also get the Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss and called uh, by the Grave here. But he's able to kind of power through this. He also stops uh, the Crusadia uh, Regulex from activating, but it's going to attack multiple times. That was kind of unfortunate. So you can see the use of that card. Let's go ahead and take a look at this though, hold on. Because I know some of you are gonna say, well, he didn't even get the effect of it. That's not the point. The point is, is that it forces out the negate anything uh, type of a card that would be spell speed three that, again, uh, your monsters just wouldn't be able to deal with. Uh, you don't have the follow-up play. You can't respond to uh, their uh, spell speed three or counter trap card, basically. Or I guess Taylor Super Poly could be an example too. But uh, let's go ahead and look at this example again. If that card would have one off, what would have been the result here? Uh, because um, this, the card is still very good, even though it didn't see its actual effect uh, being used. He would technically, if you let this go through, he would have had an extra turn over here. And potentially, depending on what the opponent did, uh, he might have been able to actually win if he did not actually stop this card. So anyways, let's go ahead and hop right into this. So. He's going to go ahead and activate that. That's going to go ahead and stop by Crescendo. And then he's going to go ahead and uh, basically wipe the board. Okay. So at the end of the day, if he let this go through, he wouldn't have had these negations. The opponent would have went off even further and would have wiped the board. But remember, this has the downside of that um, your opponent takes no damage. So at that point, what are we looking at? Okay. So we're looking at maybe, I mean, he probably would have activated this anyways. Um, even if uh, he let this go through. So let's say that the board is completely clear. Okay, he was definitely going to go ahead and clear the board. Um, more than likely, Crescendo would have been activated at some point. So again, we're, we're talking about no cards here, and our opponent gets rid of everything. What would be our top deck here? And again, this is this goes the same with like Pendulum decks. Salmon Great's a little bit different because I want to say that they have the most recovery out of a lot of the uh, meta decks here. Um, these are, are great cards. However, when we look at uh, Crescendo here, uh, it ha does have that effect. We get to uh, banish this card and add one of your Dark Machine monsters banished, but that doesn't exist at the moment. However, the top deck is a Draco Net, and there is another target for it, which would, of course, be the uh, Guard Dragon Justica over here. Uh, but the thing is, there's no point in it because it's not going to go ahead and lead us into other uh, cards. With the Dragon Maids, if you do happen to have the bigger ones, you might have some recovery, but at the end of the day, it's still just going to gain your opponent in a sense where you dominated their board that was supposed to give uh, them the win condition. You got over it, and then your opponent's going to top deck like one card, and if you have any like one negation, which there's a lot of decks that will have just one negation, that's not asking for too much, you usually win the duel anyways because they're top decking into your board. So that's another great card for comebacking uh, your uh, comebacks uh, in the game. The next thing I want to talk about is Super Polymerization. This is a great card because it can be used offensively and defensively. However, this one is really deck dependent. Um, this one technically you could argue is deck dependent too. There's a lot of times where let's say Dinosaurs, for example, is another a relatively popular deck and that deck does not special summon five or more times uh, on average unless of course you're playing any true king variant or any dragon orca or uh, dinosaur uh, orcas variant heck there is i know that there is the dinosaur guard dragon orcas deck as well there's a lot of variants where yeah this card just makes really great use and this is an this is like an automatically win this can be an automatically win too however um with this card uh, you do have to let your opponent go off, and depending on their deck, they could have a negation of this card, and you have to have another follow-up play, and if they have multiple negations, in addition to a negate this card, you can lose out. I think this card, if you're dealing with the most difficult of boards, this is probably going to be your go-to card. However, this card has uh, a lot more ease of access of actually activating the card. But anyways, next I want to talk about Super Poly, which is a, another fantastic uh, comeback card, which I'm going to show another example of here. 
This one's actually a combination of both. Uh, not only are we going to see our boy Nibiru here, but there's so many decks that can go completely off. And I always recommend you to do Nibiru at the last moment. But sometimes you don't know what your opponent is playing. They might have another comeback card here. Uh, you guys are going to see Nibiru activated immediately over here. He didn't want him to, I guess, bounce back some of the cards with Zephyros. But nonetheless, um, he goes ahead and goes to Nibikop. And you're going to see he's still going to be able to go completely off uh, under Nibiru. Uh, now, you can only use this effect of uh, Nibiru uh, once per turn. But it, it, you are going to see he's coming back after this. Um, he goes ahead and makes a Evil Storm Nightmare over here, uh, but Super Poly is here to go ahead and just basically deal with the board. This card is just so fantastic. Uh, there's another target uh, with it, of course. You have uh, a lot of great targets, specifically Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. It's probably one of the most common cards that you will see, but there are a lot of other options. Um, Depending on what deck you're playing, you might run out of room if you're playing heroes. Obviously, at this point, that's game. Super Poly is one of the uh, cards, it's dependent on your deck uh, as well as your opponent's. However, if you're running a deck like heroes, for example, you can use this at any time. If you're uh, just going for some OTK plays, you can make a board. Uh, however, sometimes I have seen a lot of uh, people run into the troubles. Uh, they go for Super Poly too early. They, they don't go for like the first like Link monster, and then they're stuck with the uh, the monster, the extra deck monster zone clogged up with that Predaplant card or whatever the card is. So, so you might you don't have to activate Super Poly immediately, but I understand that if there's so many negations. But more than likely, if you go for beat cop or just a generic uh like link to or just any link that just gives you that extra zone that you want for this um your opponent might not negate that so let that let that uh be a option for you as well but anyways the next card i want to talk about because super poly i'm sure a lot of you guys have already seen this mostly it's just for these two cards um and just showcasing how good these cards are and i want to talk about cards that have basically phased out of Yu -Gi Oh. i also wanted to include this but i didn't hit save uh but any of the mirror force cards uh specifically the storm oh we've got to go to uh there we go so any of the uh mirror force cards i did want to mention them briefly i think that there are still viability depending on what deck you're playing i still think that these are great comeback cards in 2019 but they're, they're a little bit slow and again most things will just outclass these cards but uh the other card i want to talk about is dimension shifter now this card is pretty much only good turn one for most decks and the reason why is it says if you have no card in your graveyard as the quick effect you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard until the end of the next turn any card sent to the graveyard is banished obviously this is deck dependent some decks will be like oh okay it's fine you can go ahead and get rid of that as long as you're not stopping me special uh, special summoning i'm going to be good to go so they're going to go completely off again the other problem that i have with this is if you go turn one there's a huge problem with this card, it's no cards. If it said no monsters, some other decks might be able to make some good use of this, but Dimension Shifter is kind of outclassed because one, it's only literally good turn one, and if you're going first, a lot of times you're going to get a card in the graveyard, and this card is not going to be very good. But again, depending on the deck, of course, you're playing, if you're playing a banished deck, then you're good to go with that. Um, now, Evenly Matched is a really great card, and I still really like this card against, like, True Dracos. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, but there's some matchups where, like, against Sky Striker, you can just be excellent against that card, uh, against that deck as well. But I feel like this card has almost gotten outclassed because this will completely disrupt your opponent. This, this too, like, against most decks, I know Sky Strikers, obviously this card is not going to be super insane. Uh, but uh, the problem with this card is one, your opponent gets to keep that one card, and they get to choose, which is never good, and you get to let your opponent decide certain things. But in addition to that, um, you basically lose out in your battle phase, so you give them, like, a next turn, kind of like how this card will give them the next turn. Although, this card requires a follow-up, but this card doesn't really. Like, you could activate this instantly and just win the game uh, off of them just deciding to keep one monster or whatever the, they decide to keep. But I think that this card has pretty much got outclassed, because why give them the option to choose the one monster more likely it's going to be something that has some negation uh, or they could just negate this card outright already uh why give them that option uh, when you could just be like you're not going to control anything um i also wanted to briefly mention like dark hole regeki because these are still really great cards but you need to like keep in mind a lot of decks have some type of uh other negation uh and that's the problem with like regeki and dark hole and that's why a lot of players aren't really main decking them and some people are uh, side decking them, but I wanted to give a shout out to Gores because I thought this was one of the best comeback cards back in the day. You you play Gores in 2019, people will be laughing at you because it's just not that viable. Yeah, you might be able to survive for a turn, but Gores and the token don't really do too much. Um, I mean, Pangatrops can also be another great card, um, but if we're talking about the, uh, I'm about to type in Pangatrops. 
It's because we had this selected. Um, this card is just so good as well. But if, if I wanted to make the list, I honestly would consider this list like a top three. Uh, but I did, again, want to mention some other cards. Like, even these cards, uh, or the, the Storming uh, is also a great uh, Mirror Force addition to this. But if you're looking to come back against majority of these, I think your go-to card is going to be generally Nibiru. It's going to be uh, Super Poly. Uh, Dark Ruler No More can also be a fantastic card. But the problem with this card, again, depending on the matchup with the Omni Negate, even though in the duel that we saw it got stopped, it still provides that instant, I'm going to stop that one card. Your opponent must respond to this. That's, that's again, the uh, biggest thing with this card. But again, I think if I was to rank these, I would definitely put Nibiru at hands down number one. And a lot of people are talking about what they want to main deck, uh, whether they want to main deck triple of these, triple, like, I've heard people, I'm run triple, 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 that's nine cards. Uh, you could have no follow-up play, which, you know, some of these cards do require. I mean, obviously with this, you don't, this card deals with the problem and gives you that additional card. Um, but again, with this, this is the one that requires the most follow-up, I would say. Um... Because, again, if there's an Omni Negate, I would just prefer this. But, anyways, that's my thoughts on the best combat cards in 2019 uh, in Yu-Gi-Oh. I would, I would keep this list at a top three. This one does, like, the rest are just honorable mentions, but I think they've been outclassed in the game right now, uh, for the most part. But, I know there's people who would be like, yo, where the Kaijus, where the Love Goal Mat? Why, why even bother with those when you could get rid of everything? And then, on top of that, you have a 3,000 attacker. They have a big token, but you some somewhere along the lines of the step, especially if you're playing any uh, Orcus variants, you're, you're going to go ahead and go right into... Uh, you can go into Cerberus, or you can go into uh, whatever card you need to. You can just get rid of that one card. It's not that big of a deal. And I think that, uh, yeah, these are, these are definitely the prime three. But I would say... I like this one more. I'm not sure if I would even main deck this. And the next question I want to bring to you guys is what are the number of these cards you are playing? For me, I am honestly really enjoying three super poly. Like there's so many matchups where you just throw this down and it's game. Um, and I honestly want to say that when this comes out, um, I want to play three of these as well. But I also wanted to uh, mention this because right now I am playing a, a Mermel variant of Orcus. And the thing that I like with it, I'm, I'm also playing uh, uh, Aqua Dolphin, because Aqua Dolphin, surprisingly enough, you can run triple Aqua Dolphin. And people are like, what, 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 why would you run triple Aqua Dolphin? The reason why is you can proc the effects of the waters off of that discard, which then gives you this card as a one card, uh, basically, combo, and it reveals your opponent's hand. So you could say, oh, do you have Super Poly? Do you have this card? And you can go ahead and get rid of, you know, whatever the case may be. And then I'm also, right now, I'm running some of the bigger dangers, specifically uh, Bigfoot. Um, this is also a, is it, is it Big Dash Foot? Oh. Is it one word? Okay, anyways, so uh, if you run like Bigfoot, if you run any of the larger monsters, you can snipe some of these cards out of your opponent's hands, which at that point, well, you probably don't want to snipe this card uh, out of your opponent's hand because more than likely they would have activated this effect immediately anyways, and on top of that, uh, well, yeah, you're probably not going to get that effect now uh, to get rid of this card. But the thing is, is that you can also Mulan Glace. Uh, if, if I go for my big boy combo, right, like if I have Mulan... If I Moulin Glace them at some point, right, they're waiting to activate this effect. If I Moulin Glace knock two cards out of their hand and then this is their third card, uh, I still happen to have a full hand. Like, I, I can literally just go off of uh, Atlantean Prince. And, and this could just be like my one card. I, I only invest one card into my big boy combo, which goes into uh, Moulin Glacia. And depending on how far it goes down the line, um, I've been actually going for this. Instead of going for Savage Dragon, I've been going for uh, Omega. And um, this has been like a really, okay, I, I feel like this this is a separate video now I'm talking about like, dude, this card don't even affect me. But the thing is, is that it really doesn't uh, affect me that much because if, because again, people don't want to activate this card too early. You activate this card too early. It's like, okay, I'm going to continue my combo. If you activate it too late after I Moulin Glace you, after, uh, after I Moulin Glace and then I go for uh, Omega, um, because people really don't expect this card in the middle of the combo. It comes out of nowhere. It's a surprise factor. And I probably shouldn't be mentioning this because now people are going to be knowing what what I'm doing. But basically, you get to knock three cards out of the hand. You knock three cards out of the hand. This is their fourth card. And then at that point, uh, I mean, they have two cards. I still have basically my full hand because everything else I got for free. I technically might lose my battle phase, but, you know, what's what's a battle phase in Yu-Gi-Oh? When, you when you've gotten rid of everything your opponent has, right? Uh, and then next turn you can follow up. Uh, like, I'm still playing Neos Alias, so, like, that card can still instantly get me another Aqua Dolphin because, again, I'm, like, 
contemplating on actually running three Aqua Dolphins. Right now I'm doing two. Uh, anyways, I feel like this is a separate video for uh, me talking about how good my deck is against these cards. But nonetheless, um, being able to reveal your opponent's hand is huge in Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, and obviously, this card is just, it's probably one of the best cards we've gotten in a long time. Anyways, oh my gosh, I just noticed the time. Yo, we already hit that 10 minute ad revenue twice, boys, let's go. <laughs> Anyways, um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and kind of talking about and show, showcasing off other examples of like better comeback cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! Because again, it can be frustrating when you're dealing with these. And I feel like, I want to make a separate video talking about this, but I feel like, even though a lot of people feel like, feel like these cards saved Yu-Gi-Oh, honestly, it still becomes a one-turn game. Your opponent goes off, you go ahead and slam one of these down on it, and then you're like, okay, I go off and you can't respond because you used all your cards. That's just the way the game is played. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like on. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Turn on that bell if you don't want to miss out on new Yu-Gi-Oh uh, discussion videos uh, like this in the future. But uh, anyways, thanks for watching. Peace.